For most of the last century, rhetoricians and rhetorical critics of all kinds have employed Kenneth Burke's dramatistic pentad to forge critical understandings of some of the most historical rhetorical compositions. His ingenious and heuristic rubric is composed of five interrelated elements that can be utilized to better understand the rhetoric behind human motives, which include the following. 1. The act. 2. The scene. 3. The agent. 4. The agency. And lastly, 5. The purpose. Applying Burke's pentad and all of its interlocking elements, I was successfully able to critically analyze Greta Thunberg's How Dare You Speech, one that caught worldwide attention after its delivery in September of last year, attempting to bring awareness to the atrocities of climate change. Firstly, the act was the speech itself, which criticized world leaders for their inherent inaction on the basis of climate change. In her speech, she goes on to blame world leaders for failing the younger generations, who in the future will have to carry out the burden of living in a dead and unsustainable world, simply because some of them choose not to acknowledge the negative impacts of climate change to our planet. The world is waking up, explains Thunberg, as she argues that the younger generations are more present and aware of the negligence that is stemming from our world leaders, those who have taken the responsibility to lead for the betterment of the world. The scene of the action took place at the UN Climate Action Summit in New York City on September 23, 2019. However, the scene creates exigency, as the physical scene holds only half of the significance in our rhetorical analysis. Given the fact that the speech was delivered in a period in history that views the world at a divide between the acknowledgement of climate change as a serious issue or not, gives a greater rhetorical significance. The issue of climate change is present in almost all forms of social media, yet there is a minuscule amount of action taking place to combat it. Next, we examine the agent. The most obvious agent in this scenario would be Greta Thunberg herself, a 17-year-old Swedish climate change activist whose sudden rise to fame last year has made her one of her generation's leading spokeswomen on protecting our planet from the desecration of climate change. Although it is evident that she's the primary agent, one can also argue that her supporters and the youth who have become enlightened by her movement also constitute as agents to the action being performed. Although not present at the time of her speech, the agents that make up her supporters are often referred back to in her speech. The element of agency is next in line to be examined. Thunberg's speech left the audience experiencing waves of emotions such as sadness, anger, frustration, and worry. She brilliantly uses pathos in her delivery to convey a specific message that would most definitely evoke a certain emotional response. She also repeatedly uses the phrase, how dare you, at the end of almost all paragraphs, given the effect that she was blaming each of us individually instead of the world leaders that she was previously addressing. She shifted her attention from the negligent world leaders to us putting the blame on the individual. Lastly, she effectively used tons of staggering scientific facts and numbers to draw attention to the urgentness of this issue. The purpose was over, as it was a clear climate strike that demanded action to help combat climate change. The speech was a platform for spreading awareness about taking the necessary steps for protecting our planet as well as protecting future generations against the burden that negligence has brought us. However, as stated previously, the five elements of the pentad standing alone offer a critic a limited analysis of the bigger picture of a rhetorical performance. In order to have a clear understanding of the connection between the elements of the pentad, one must interpret the elements as pairs of ratios. Similar to that of a puzzle, each individual piece holds significance. However, when brought together and interlocked, the value of your analysis increases as it now encompasses the greater picture. One example of this is the act-agent relationship that is most often restated as who is doing what. In this case, Greta speaks out to ensure awareness and a call to action to save our planet. But at the same time, we also have millions of youth supporters who have been influenced by Thunberg's protests. After her speech went viral, the world saw an enormous spike in supporters who are willing to stand by and collectively fight for one cause. A second ratio, act-purpose, examines the relationship between the act of the speech and its greater purpose. The fact that the speech was given by none other than an adolescent who should be spending her time in school rather than attending conferences to raise awareness on an issue that should already be addressed by higher power individuals sends a powerful message to those who support her and those who are listening. Thunberg opens up her speech with a powerful quote, This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? The last ratio relationship to analyze is that of act agency. I decided to relate Greta's relationship with her supporters as a type of cultural agency. Her and her supporters have come together to speak up against what needs to be done. She belongs to the generation for which she speaks for, giving her that sense of agency when she speaks out for them collectively. Through the use of Burke's dramatistic pentad, I was able to look deeper past the underlying text to examine the speech as a true rhetorical piece of art.